Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, December 11th to Saturday, December 17th. So last week, we had a lot going on. Of course, it was our first kind of introduction to December's energy. And of course, we are in a state of accelerated manifestation. So things are going pretty quick, pretty rapid. And there's a whole lot of delusion and confusion that comes with that. Of course, Neptune went direct on the third, which provided us with a shift that we're still not quite feeling as of yet. Of course, Neptune does bring a layer of confusion and delusion and vagueness and fogginess to our realm. There's essentially like this little curtain of uh, non-visibility still kind of waiting to be pulled back. Now, Neptune being an older planet, very low and slow, it does take a little bit of time for us to kind of adjust to that energy. But that curtain, that veil will be slowly pulled back, removing the confusion, removing the delusion, removing the vagueness, removing the fogginess, and of course, helping us to realign uh, with our higher selves, with our intuition to redefine what our dream, what our vision is to allow that creativity to flow. And of course, we have these beautiful rose colored glasses put back on our face. So we're able to kind of look at the highlights of life instead of the low lights that of course, we've had enough of. And although we're still very much in our faces, we have the ability to pluck out the silver linings now that Neptune has gone direct. Um, This has also created a little bit of a shift in our sleep state in our dream state, you may have noticed that the dreams have taken a little bit of a weird turn. Now, while Neptune was retrograde, many of us having night terrors and nightmares and really unearthing a lot of the pain and trauma in our unconscious selves in our sleep states. And now that Neptune is direct, we aren't feeling that darkness as heavy as it was. Again, we're still in this stage where You know, it takes Neptune quite a lot of time uh, to get back to its direct position and and clear its post-shadow period. And because of that, our dream state is a little bit lighter, a little bit more fluffy, a little bit more, I'm going to say clear, although there's some still pretty dark and cryptic messages that we're getting in our dream state. A lot of that is just because our unconscious selves are coming back online and we're able to process some of the heavier topics and themes that we literally were just running from while Neptune was retrograde. Of course, being in survival mode, you don't have a lot of time to sit and process through the highs and the lows of our experiences. And that's what our unconscious does while we sleep. So we are kind of seeing a little bit of a shift in our sleep state as well. Of course, we had Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, move out of that Sag energy, which was a lovely break, if I do say so myself. I find with Mercury and Sag, even though we're a little bit more positive and optimistic and really pushing the boundaries of what we believe is possible for ourselves, it is a lot of pressure in the head. And like I said before, having like a hundred windows open in your head and there's sounds coming and, you know, flashing at you that you won a million dollars and all this kind of stuff. We don't know how to close the moat. It was just overly stimulating, I would say. And there was a lot of pressurized thoughts, pressurized speech, rapid thoughts, big ideas that we weren't even able to really sit with or, or follow through. Uh, because again, that Sag energy as as lit as that Sag energy is as positive as it is, it is scatterbrained all the hell and we were just unfocused and we were all over the place. And I personally feel a lot calmer, I would say, with Mercury now in Capricorn energy, of course, that Earth energy from Capricorn just kind of grounds us out a little bit. Um, It it was definitely a welcome shift, although many of us didn't really get to appreciate that, because it happened literally like a day before we had that full moon in Gemini that rules over the mental plane, right? Mercury rules over Gemini energy, we had Mercury ground itself out, Earth itself out in this Capricorn energy, the manifesting energy didn't even get time to get our ducks in a row to focus on our long term goals and what it is that we wanted to manifest because we dove right in to the highly electric, very rapid thoughts, very much 
anxious state of thoughts, of feelings, of being with that full moon in Gemini. We're still kind of reeling from that. We're still in the full moon energy. And, you know, I've had so many people reach out to me like, oh, my God, I have such bad anxiety. My head's all over the place. I, I can't keep a thought. I, my words aren't coming out of my mouth correctly. Like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, people, do you not listen to the freaking forecast that I put out every freaking day? It frustrates me to no end because I really just feel that there's no need for any of us to be walking around confused about the state of our health and our wellness and our energy. Like there's so much information and content that me, myself personally puts out there that I don't understand why anybody should be walking around confused this day and age. And I'm not just saying like only solely listen to me. If you gravitate to somebody who's legit and knows what they're talking about and can help you stay in front of the energies and stay informed so that you don't have to find yourself in this cluster F of energies and confused and scared and all this kind of crap, by all means, gravitate towards them. But the amount of people that just would, you know, like to skip listening to the forecast, skip those moon guides, not do any of the work and just jump into my DMs like, oh, what's wrong with me? I can't think I can't do this. Help me, help me, help me. It's very disappointing. Okay, so let me just get Debbie Downer on you already. It is very disappointing. I'm really going to encourage you to boss up and to take accountability and responsibility. How hard is it to press play and listen to a forecast that will essentially map out what it is that you're going to experience for the week, for the month, for the, even the year ahead? I put out yearlies for Christ's sake. So, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit frustrated with the amount of people that just skip doing the work slide into my DMs or shoot off an email as if they're the only ones going through this. And it is just, um, honestly, it's a waste of my time to have to reply individually and say, did you listen on the forecast? Did you download your moon guide? Did you do this? Did you do that? And the answer is no, 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 no. Okay, well, here you go. You know, there's the links, go do it get on board, stop whining, stop complaining, get ahead of the game. There's realistically no excuses at this point. And my tolerance is getting very, very, very thin. Uh, so, you know, that full moon, like, you know, I, I, I talked about it at the beginning of the month. Um, we talk about it in these ascension forecasts as we approach these things. There's astral forecasts out there. You know, if you want to stay in tune with what's going on, jump over to my Patreon. We talk about all the energy blasts. We take a look at the Schumann resonance. We examine the light codes coming in. We talk about the physical symptoms popping off. We talk about how to heal them. You know, there is no lack of information. So if you are walking around confused and overwhelmed because you don't know what's going on, that's that is on you, my friend. I am super sorry that you have not bossed up into your power and taken responsibility and accountability over your life. You should probably get on that. We're entering into a very interesting time where those types of people are going to be cast aside, cast away. They're not going to be a part of this shift. So if, if this is resonating with you and you're like, oh, damn, I'm one of these people, then you definitely need to put your uh, cosmic panties on and do something with yourself because uh, we're moving into an interesting time where those types of excuses and unaccountability just ain't going to fly. So we had this full moon in Gemini. We're still sitting in it. The electricity in the air is high. It's palpable. We have a lot of anxiety, a lot of rapid thoughts, a lot of competing thoughts. Then here today, if you're listening to me on Friday evening here in the live chat, I want to thank you so much for being here. But we also have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, money, pleasure, moving out of Sagittarius energy here today and shifting into Capricorn as well. So as you know, any time that we are nearing the end of a sign, the planet reaches that critical degree, especially 28, 29th degree, 29th in particular. Um, and that is when there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of intensity coming at us because we're supposed to be wrapping this up. It's almost like that breaking point, that releasing point as we shift into a different energy. And again, Sag energy has been absolutely what we needed. 
after that Scorpio season, after that eclipse season, we needed that light at the end of the tunnel. We needed our cheerleaders, our hype girls to come in and, and boost us up again. We needed to be optimistic. We needed to be confident. We needed to be exploring and experimenting with new worth, new values, because of course, we're standing in a new truth. And with that new truth, we're standing on the precipice of a brand new quest, a brand new adventure, where new missions, new meaning, new purpose is coming to our lives. And that's what that sad energy is all about. We dream big, we think big, we emote big, we share big, we experiment big, everything is big. Why? Because Jupiter rules over Sagittarius energy. And the beautiful thing, although it might not feel so beautiful to some of y'all, you'll have to, you know, let me know how this is affecting you. But that shift in the Capricorn energy, I think, is is very welcomed. Yes, it's low. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it grounds us out. Yes, we're connected to the earth. Yes, we have to kind of slow our roll and, and get focused, right? We have to take whatever was kind of triggered and activated in us, what inspired us and motivated us in this Sag energy, and we have to refine it. We have to make it a little bit more realistic, a little bit more achievable. This is where we add logic and practicality to it, where we have to put the blinders on and cut the bullshit away from, you know, the realistic facts of the matter. And I, for one, really prefer, you know, getting organized and creating order out of said chaos. I really enjoy uh, being able to focus on one thing, complete a thought. I really enjoy slowing the roll. So I'm a little bit more, you know, present with myself instead of just bouncing around being all crazy and chaotic in that fire energy of Sag. A lot of people complain about it because it does feel like we hit a wall, like we hit, you know, splat down on the earth from, from flying high. But at the same time, that's a very short lived adjustment period. And then we can go ahead and we can actually be productive in getting our ducks in a row and setting our sights on what it is that we actually want to experience and actually want to manifest in our lives. And, and that's where we should be at at this particular stage of the game. So, you know, this week, all we got going on, and I shouldn't say all we got going on, because there's, you know, there's background topics and themes that are that are playing at us as well. But astrologically speaking, because that's what we talk about here is all we got going on is we're building towards that last quarter moon in Virgo energy on the 16th, I believe. And this is beautiful. It's taking place at 24 degrees, which means that we're in the latter part of the energy and Virgo energy creates order out of chaos. So not only does this Capricorn energy that our Mercury and Venus is now in, that's our heart and our head essentially, um, but now emotionally speaking and unconsciously speaking in our inner realm, the moon being in the Virgo energy is going to help us sort things out. And that's exactly what we need. And we have to consider the fact that, you know, the last quarter moon is the moon phase that follows that full moon in Gemini, which everything is crazy. Everything is overstimulated. There's competing thoughts. Our brains aren't working. Can't speak on our inner realm and put it into actual articulate words for the life of us. And we need a little bit of help. That Virgo energy is an earth energy. It has us very focused on, you know, realistic goals, what needs to be focused on. And like I said, the last quarter moon is wrapping up this particular moon cycle. Oh, Cause of course we have a new moon in Capricorn taking place here on the 23rd after we shift into Capricorn season and trigger that solstice energy on the 21st. And of course that's all taking place just after Jupiter moves back into Aries energy. Again, if you haven't listened to the December energy forecast that I put out, that intro that I put out, definitely go ahead, take a listen, prepare yourself. One thing that I will say, and I'm probably getting ahead of myself here because we do have it written down for my homework notes. Um, but one thing that I will say is that do not sleep on this new moon in Capricorn, okay, it is taking place on the 23rd. And yes, I know holiday and Christmas crap is really interfering uh, with the moon's energies. I talked about this very briefly last week, how it was no, you know, no mistake that that new moon in Capricorn being as powerful as it is and manifesting energies is so close to this, you know, chaotic holiday that that the world is misunderstood about, so that many ple people miss on it right? They sleep on it. And let me tell you, I was so freaking disappointed in the numbers of people that didn't 
take advantage of that last full moon in Gemini that we just had. It's really making me question what kind of year we are going to have in this uh, awakened ascension community, if you will, because a lot of people are falling off the wagon for this capitalistic crap. And that's very concerning to people that can see right through it. And um, I've had a lot of people ask me to do a little bit of a blurb on what Christmas actually is and, and where the delusion and the confusion comes from. And I'm definitely putting my notes together and that's uh that's going to be a marley rant on my patreon that'll be the second episode coming at you hopefully here early next week um i got a lot on the go i have a very very long list of things to do in preparation for not only wrapping this year up and of course my move but i gotta get my ass in gear i got a lot really planned out for 2023 and that is coming at us very very fast so the last thing that I want to talk about this week, I said it was relatively of a quiet week. One thing I want you to keep in the back of your mind is that we are approaching the galactic center of our universe, basically. 27 degrees Sagittarius is the approximate coordinates of where it is that we are in the center of our galaxy in the Milky Way, this whole, you know, coordinates and sky thing. And I get that, but we're building towards it. And what does that mean? Well, it means that we will be in a true alignment with the higher interdimensional let's call them guardians that look over us, that protect us, that download us with the light codes that we need for this particular chapter of Ascension, which means that the closer that we get to that 27th degree, um, we are really in the realm of receiving a lot of energy from the cosmos. And of course, we are seeing that with the Schumann resonance, solar flares, CMEs popping off, beautiful, beautiful pictures of uh, some of those activities popping off. Again, if you're interested in that, scoot over to my Patreon where we talk all about it. Um, and the other thing that I want to keep, you know, just planted in the back burner of your mind here is that we're getting closer and closer to the 21st, which is Capricorn season, which is the solstice energy, which means that we are in the final days of this last chapter. And this last chapter, as we move into the solstice is almost like a karmic reset. And if you're wondering where the karmic reset comes from, you need to be taking a good look back at the events that have transpired for you. Uh, during eclipse season. The, so this is why like we come out of Scorpio season, we came out of that eclipse season, we had a lot of karmic energies, divine scripts thrown at us, we had the Sag energy trying to pump us up, cheer us up, make us hopeful, make us really uh, optimistic and confident and focused on the possibilities of the future and had us conjuring up bigger dreams than we're actually able to achieve. That's That happens for a reason because we need our vibrations and frequencies to be high as we uh, go into this solstice energy, which basically just visualize the universe, uh, you know, putting in a cheat code to this little video game that we're in. And then all of a sudden we start a different level of the video game and it is uh, very jolting. It is very cryptic. And what we have to understand is that when we get to places in our astrology where we're about to jump into a new chapter, there's always an ending before a beginning. And the endings always come at a crisis critical degree that always brings an intensity and always brings a pressure. And we have to expect a, a, a breakdown before a breakthrough. And so, you know, this is just adding an extra layer to the intensities of energies that we are all currently experiencing. So just keep that in the back of your mind as we rapidly, because this is a very fast energy that we're sitting in here, as we rapidly move through the very last chapter of Sagittarius energy and Sagittarius lessons and seasons and cycles, and we prepare to move into that Capricorn energy. Again, a lot of this gets totally ignored because of this holiday crap, and I would really really, really, really recommend to you that you get very serious about putting yourself at the top of the Christmas list, at the top of the to-do list here, because you do not want to sleep on the energies that we still have to experience throughout the course of December. Do not sleep on it. Do not sleep on the moon guide. Do not sleep on listening to these astro forecasts because I'm telling you, if you keep coming into my inbox, keep coming into my DMs with the complaints about what's going on and I feel crazy and this and that and the other thing and you haven't done the work, you're probably not going to get the nicest response for me because again, tolerance level, very freaking low at this point. 
So let's dive into the homework before we start ranting and raving about the ascension symptoms that we will be experiencing throughout the course of this week. First of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for being in the chat. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting. I want to thank you for jumping over to my Patreon. That is a much better platform than this current platform that you're listening to me on. Um, I have taken a severe hit on my channel, in my numbers, in my views. It is absolutely disturbing and devastating and disgusting to see how a small content creator like myself can be flagged and pegged and totally outcasted from the algorithm. It is very much not only hurting my feelings, it's hurting my bank account. And you know what? I can handle my feelings being hurt, but you do not want to mess with my money. And YouTube right now is really testing me. And the more that they push me uh, away, the more I am going to kind of deviate and move over to other platforms because this just feels like an all right down attack. I want to thank you. You know who you are coming with that powerful warrior energy having my back wanting to beat up YouTube if they were actually something to beat up. I appreciate you so much. I've had so many very supportive and encouraging comments uh, about, you know, just helping me to realize that I'm not crazy, right? Like my channel one day will be a certain number and then it literally drops like three to 500 points the next day. My view count goes down by a thousand. Nobody's even commenting on my stuff anymore. Thank you for those of you who are. It takes me like two days now to get the notifications that y'all are even interacting with my channel. It is absolutely heartbreaking and frustrating. And I just want to thank you for showing up, for continuing to liking the content, sharing the content, commenting on the content. It is a desperate plea for me to be sitting here right now and just asking you to interact in some kind of way in order to keep this information alive. Why do I care about the numbers? Technically, I don't. Of course, I do care about my bank account, not going to lie there. But at the same time, I don't do this for money. I do this because this is the job that I signed up to do. This is why they brought me back from the dead. This is why I have the sole contract that I do. I am here to bring the information. My whole goal is to be in front of as many people that need to hear this information as possible. And when I get blocked, when I get flagged, when I get outcast on the algorithm, that is minimizing the opportunity of appearing in front of a newly awakened person that is desperately needing this kind of information, validation, and encouragement and support at a very, very scary point in their lives. And even if you're not newly awakened, just to know that you're not alone and that you're not going cray cray is a huge, huge thing in this day and age when there's so much craziness going on. And it absolutely just breaks my heart to see my numbers go down, my view count go down, because I know that that is a suppression of the information that absolutely needs to be in front of the right people at the right time. And the fact that they are hindering that process is just making me a little bit frustrated, a little bit angry. So I want to thank you for being here, for showing up, for, you know, interacting. That is the main thing. Um, And again, if you know somebody that is new to this experience or seasoned to this experience and just need a reminder that they're not alone in it, please send my link, my channel, my videos their way. I also want to thank you for taking advantage of booking all the appointments that I put out there. I only put enough appointments out to take me up to, I believe, April. And I think we are booking towards the end of February. As of right now, I want to thank you for doing that. The investment that you're making in yourself is 100% appreciated, not only by me, uh, but by the universe, because we need you to be right. We need you to be aligned. We need you to be standing in your power in order for your cup to be flow with Ova. And of course, help the collective consciousness with their vibration, with their frequency, with this ascension process. So I want to thank you so much for taking advantage of those appointments. I also want to thank you for the lovely feedback that you all were giving my way on the workbooks that I kind of, you know, the whole idea, the whole concept that I dropped there last week, uh, very positive response to that. I'm definitely going to get my ass in gear and see if I can pull something else out of the hat in order to help us navigate these energies. And especially moving through 2023, we are going to need a little bit of extra help. Of course, I do have a 2023 energy forecast about to drop here very soon. 
and that will kind of give you the lay of the land on what it is that we can expect to experience in 2023, which, you know, there's some highs, but there are some lows as always. And we are going to need a little bit of an additional uh, I'm going to say spiritual assist, if you will. And hopefully these workbooks are going to help us do just that. So I wanted to thank you for that as well. Okay, so the ascension symptoms for this week. Well, first of all, I want to talk about the fact that Mercury, okay, so Mercury moved into Capricorn. We, we touched briefly on this little rant beginning here when I did the review, but Mercury is a major player right now because we got to get our minds right. Um, like I said, in Sag energy, that was definitely the hype girl energy that we needed, the positivity, the optimistic energy that we needed. Uh, but we really weren't very productive. And that is the name of the game in Capricorn energy. We got to be productive. We got to see progress here. Um, it is the manifesting energy. It is ruled over by karma, right? Saturn. We're moving into a very powerful time for Mr. Saturn. Uh, again, connected to the holidays. If you don't know, then you're going to know when I drop this episode on what Christmas and Saturnalia and Santa Claus and the classroom is all about. Um, hopefully I dropped enough keywords there to pique your interest. If you don't know, then you should maybe take a little peek on the little Google thing and see if Google is going to lie to you or tell you the truth. Because let me tell you, Google has been going through its own thing here. Um, and some of the search results that once displayed a little bit of truth, they're totally being revamped. I don't know who they got kind of going through the history books on the interweb and altering, you know, details that could essentially set our minds free, but they're going, they're, they're doing a lot of overtime here just to try and, uh, I'm going to say curve the truth, curve the information and the knowledge that people are obviously, uh, thirsty for. Um, I've seen just a, a huge dramatic change in um, the results that you get when you're going and, and typing in keywords and, and what it is that you're actually looking for. And the thirst and knowledge comes because of the Sag energy. You know, Sag energy is the higher education, you know, philosophy and religion and mysticism. Like that's exactly where we open the door uh, to wanting and, and craving that kind of knowledge. And um, it's really sad that, you know, out in the world, uh, information and knowledge is being suppressed in the way that it is. Of course, knowledge is power, and that's why they're doing it. So, you know, it doesn't take a science a science degree to figure out why it is that they're going to great lengths in order to suppress this kind of information. But I'm just saying that Mercury, being the ruler of the mental plane, literally the messenger of the gods, okay? If you don't know about, you know, mythology and and all that kind of stuff and where these planets and where the gods and the mythology have come from, then... You know, you should look into that as well. It's probably something I should put on my list to create for the new year. Uh, but being the messenger of the gods, you know, Mercury has a, a huge job on his hands. And it's very important for us to get very right in our heads, in our mental planes, and understand how powerful our minds actually are and realize that what it is that we focus on and what it is that we speak about is what it is that we are continuing to keep alive. I want to go on a little bit of a rant here. So disclosure, I'm about to go on one. There's a lot of people and I'm, I can see it from different levels. So I'll try the best that I can to, to explain it from the way that I see it. So out on the collective right now, we have this whole quote unquote elites run in the world, quote unquote Epstein, quote unquote, you know, Balenciaga, quote unquote, and I'm doing a funny voice because it is freaking laughable. Okay. So you have all of this information coming out and, you know, all of these rabbit holes being exposed and all of these conspiracy theories being talked about. And on one page, I think it's great because, you know, people are waking up to the, to the darkness, to the corruption that our earth plane has been alive and well and existing on for like, pretty much this whole existence. So it's good that way that people are, you know, bringing certain situations to light, but it's still 3D topics, right? Like it's still earthly pain, fear, trauma, suffering, triggering topics. And what people, I guess, don't understand is that the more you talk about it, the more you make it real. The more you talk about these quote unquote elites, and I wish y'all, if you're going to continue to talk about it, would choose the different words because they're not elites. Okay. Don't give them a special title. They're, they're not elites. 
at all. Um, so you're going to have to change your your wording. Um, but the more you talk about it, the more energy you give it. The more energy you give it, the more you feed that agenda. And literally somebody is like, oh, okay, so what? We're just supposed to ignore it all and stop talking about it and it's going to go away? And it's like, yeah, that's how consciousness works. You know, there's nobody out there doing this to us. We are the universe. What we pay attention to is the storyline get, that gets brought up in our earth plane. That's how it works. So if we cut off uh, bringing attention to these topics and themes and storylines, they will cease to exist in our universe because we're not giving them any attention. And I'm not really sure why people have a hard time understanding that concept. You know, if you are sick, let's say, and you're constantly waking up and, and, and you know what, I'm not preaching from a high horse here because it took me a while too when I went through my awakening because mine was a health crisis that triggered it. And it, it takes you a while to understand what's going on. But like when you're sick and you wake up every day and you're like, oh, I feel so crappy. My body hurts so bad. This hurts so bad. I literally feel like I'm dying, blah, 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 blah. Like you're speaking that into existence. You should never declare that you are sick. You should never say, and I hear this in popular culture all the time, the, the saying now is like you're laughing so much that you're dead. Okay, keep declaring that you're dead and watch what happens to your vibration and frequency. Okay, you should not ever say that you are sick, that you are dying, that you are dead. What you speak into existence is your reality. If you are having health issues, you say that I am healing. I am in recovery. I am attempting to repair my body. So one would say, okay, and this was me, right? Like I had to learn how to walk again. I had to learn like to how to live again. So trust me, I understand the pain and the struggle of what happens in the physical body. But instead of waking up and going, oh, I'm in so much pain, you should be saying, oh my goodness, my body is trying so hard to relay a message that I just can't understand. Because that's what pain is. Pain is a messenger to let you know that something's off in your body trying to bring attention to a certain energy blockage, a certain emotion, a certain dysfunction, if you will, in your body. If you wake up and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm in so much pain. Okay, well, guess what? You're making that real. That pain is coming alive because you're giving it attention. So, you know, when I was going through my health crisis and stuff, I learned how to change my vocabulary. So if I was having a really, really tough health day, instead of saying, oh, my God, I'm having such a bad day, I feel like I'm dying. I would say, oh my goodness, my body is really asking for a lot of assistance that I just don't feel like I have the energy or awareness to give it today right? It's a whole different ball game. So what I'm saying is, is that collectively speaking, we have all of these busted ass storylines out there built to distract you. Yes. Okay. Kanye, I'll just give you some key words here. Kanye, Epstein, Balenciaga. Um, I'm not even going to say the Let's let's call it. Uh, I don't even know how to code word this because I, I know Google's going to shut me down. But uh, traffic. Let's talk about traffic. OK, all of those concepts. Yes, they're important. Yes, we need to bring awareness to it because it is a darker topic of the unconscious collective that we have to bring to light. But continuing to post about it and share this knowledge and, you know, be hype when there's new information coming out and whatever, like you are just keeping the storyline alive. Let's talk about New Earth. Let's talk about how brilliant it's going to be when we are acting from a conscious, heartfelt place in order to make decisions for our world that absolutely supports each and every single one of us individually and as a community. Let's focus on, you know, bringing light to these topics and then imagining totally dissolving, non-existent, not even a thing here in the 3D realm. We really have to pay attention to what it is that we're paying attention to. We really have to pay attention to what it is that we are feeding. We really have to pay attention to the words that we are allowing to leave our mouths as that is creating our reality. That is what consciousness is. There's so many people out there going, you know, oh, well, these quote unquote elites are doing this to us. No, they're not. 
we are doing this to us because we are allowing them to have a storyline. The minute that you understand that you are not divided from these quote unquote elites, the minute that you understand that you are not separate from these bad guys, separate from the universe, separate from God, separate from your neighbor, the minute that you realize that you are all one is the minute that you can change the game. Because we have power in numbers. They don't want you to realize that we have power in numbers, but there's more awakened individuals right now than there's ever been walking the face of this earth. They don't want you to know that because the minute that we align the awakened ones to focus on one thing to override the storylines that they literally plant in our faces in order to keep us distracted and feeding into these narratives so that those narratives, those agendas can still stay alive in this realm of consciousness. When you realize that you're feeding into the game, you can stop playing the game. If you think for two seconds that Kanye is out there speaking truth because that is his empowerment tool and it's not a controlled oppositional tool in order for them to keep control of the narrative that they want to appear that they are essentially exposing. If you think that that is real, you got to shake your head. I'm sorry. Okay. That's not even the real Kanye. Okay. That is, that is a stand in. That is an actor. Uh, if you want to use the word clone, you go right ahead. There's, there's a lot of misconceptions around what cloning actually is, what actors actually are. You know, most of the people that you're seeing on the global stage right now aren't even the real beings. You know, everybody wants to talk about Britney Spears. Oh, there's this big Britney Spears conspiracy. Britney Spears' soul has not been alive or well on the face of this earth plane for freaking years. We're talking like decades. Okay, I don't understand why people don't understand this. And for a lot of a lot of it, I don't even know what to even talk about because so many people are at such different levels of their awareness that sometimes they take what I say out of context because that's the only context that they are able to understand what it is that I'm talking about, which can create a whole cluster F of situations, right? The bottom line is, Stop paying attention to anything outside of the realm of your reality. Bottom line, control your own narrative, control what you pour into. You know, people are forever sending me uh, messages and links and, oh, watch this. And, hey, what are your thoughts about that? I don't watch it. Stop sending it to me. I am not a consumer. I'm a creator. Okay, I, I don't consume other people's information. I don't consume any type of information that would allow somebody else's seed to be planted in my garden. I have a truth. I have a connection to the cosmos, to the universe, to the God, to the higher self, whatever it is you want to call it. I don't really care. It's all the same thing. I don't need to gain information and insight outside of the realm of my being. Everything that I need is within me. And when y'all start doing the work, And strengthening your connection to your higher self, to the divine intelligence, to the cosmos, universe, God, whatever you want to call it. When you do the work and you have the connection, you will not look outside of yourself for information. You will not feel the need to watch people's TikToks, to dive into the rabbit hole, to listen to this person, to listen to that person. You won't even need to tune in and listen to me. And you know what? That's okay. And you're probably saying, okay, so you're worried about, you know, your numbers dropping, but yet you're sitting here and telling us that you don't want us to tune into you. It's not that I don't want it. I'm providing assistance right now in a very confusing time while people are still figuring out how to access their knowledge, their wisdom, the resources, the truth within themselves. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I hope that one day you reach a point of your inner knowledge and your inner sanctity, that you do not need to look outside of yourself for any validation, for any information, for any assistance, for any guidance, myself included. But until that day comes for you, I am here and hopefully we'll continue to plant the seeds in your garden until those plants are able to grow and whisper the knowledge and the wisdom that they have had inside of you this whole time. And then you will understand that there's no need to get seeds from other people that you are self-sustained to raise your garden within yourself. 
I know that was a long, a long little rant here, but I need you to understand, especially with Mercury being in Capricorn energy, especially with Mercury being the ruler over this last full moon in Gemini that people slept on, especially in the concept that we are moving towards the last quarter moon of 2022 in Virgo energy that Mercury also rules over. There's no coincidence here that Mercury is a key star, a key player for a key reason, which is about key words and key focus that your mental plane and your mouth need to be focused on. And even more than that, you need to be focused on what you shouldn't be saying, what you shouldn't be focused on, shouldn't be thinking rather than what it is that you should be. We want, you know, when people say go to your happy place, there's a reason why that concept of a happy place is in our existence. It's because when you can focus your mental plane on a state of being in a reality, a state of imagination that makes you smile, that makes you feel safe, that makes your heart happy, you are raising your vibration and frequency into that happy place. And when you are focused on your happy place and aligned with the emotions that that happy place should invoke in you, if it were a real place, what you are doing is you are signaling to the cosmos that you want to manifest that kind of reality. And when you focus your energy and you invoke an emotion, that is the first two steps of manifesting. The third is getting the heart and the head on the same page in alignment in order to engage the physical body to go ahead and take action in your physical realm in order to align with the vision, with the thoughts, with the emotions that your happy place invoke in you so that you can go ahead and start manifesting these elements and bringing them to life. It's a whole thing. This Reality that we are currently living in is the manifestation of the focus, the attention that many minds walking on this earth have been focused on and creating. So if we are living a dark storyline, it is because the people out in the world are focused on the dark storylines. We have the ability to flip the script whenever it is that we would like. And it comes down to you being the master of your domain in your own mental plane before you can go ahead and even wish of thinking of making the changes to the collective. It all starts with you. So thinking is a thing. Okay, this is why they have come out with the television, tell a vision, okay, tell a vision. When you watch the tell a vision, you are consuming a vision that the dark force agenda wants you to be consumed with. It is in their favor that they plant the seeds in your garden because then they know what is going to grow there, what you are going to be able to harvest from that. And we have to be a little bit more consciously aware with what it is that we are consuming. When your Instagram, I hope you're not on Facebook. I wish I could walk away from Facebook altogether because Facebook is the most low energy, toxic place that you could ever freaking spend your time and energy on. But like Facebook Instagram, uh, TikTok, all of these, all of these, um, I'm going to say efforts, okay, platforms that have efforts to keep you in a consumer mode mentality. The more your attention is brought outside of you, the less time you have to explore your own mental power, right? That's what the whole thing about it is. Literally, like TikTok and Instagram and stuff, there's, you know, there's a whole chemical reaction going on in our brains right now. We need that stimulation. We need that stimulation. We need that stimulation. It is absolutely disastrous for marketing people because they know that now you technically only have like three seconds to capture somebody's attention before they just scroll on. And this is a thing. They have designed these these things in order to keep your mind busy on things that don't matter because God forbid you actually sit with yourself and use your own brain power and think for yourself and explore ideas and tap into your imagination because then they cannot control the narrative. Please understand how important it is for you to master your thoughts. We have a huge freaking year coming at us. I don't want to get 
too involved with it because it's going to be misconstrued if I don't take the time to lay it out correctly. But let me just tell you that we have a huge, huge year coming at us in 2023. And the name of the game, the name of the freaking game is how strong your inner realm is going to be. How strong your mental plane is, how strong your heart chakra is, how strong your spirituality is, because I'm telling you, we are about to get rocked. Okay, so take the time right now to get a grip on the mental plane. Now, it's hard to do when we're just being bombarded with all of this holiday crap. And it is crap. Okay, it's literally a capitalistic consumer holiday. It is crap. There is not a good thing about it. And it is taking away from the most powerful time in our energetic and astrological calendar. There is a reason why you are distracted. There's a reason why you're overwhelmed. There's a reason why every emotion under the sun gets triggered by the collective under these quote unquote, quote unquote, holidays. Okay, holidays. So holiday blues are a reason, right? It is an energy harvesting celebratory day for the dark forest agenda on all fronts. If you're happy, if you're merry, if you're excited, that's energy. If you're sad, if you're depressed, if you're fearful, that's energy. They don't care what energy you give as long as you're given some kind of energy. It's a very dangerous time. I also want you to just keep in, in mind that, you know, there is a reason why these particular quote unquote holidays are in the time frames in which they are. And again, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to do a little bit of a rant about that. You know, the solstice is what we should be celebrating, not, not the 25th. If we, if we are going to be celebrating anything, the solstice is what we should be celebrating. Um, and I'm going to get a lot of feedback and flack from that because you're going to have like the, the Christian religious community come at me and say, oh, no, you're not supposed to worship the planets or the stars. OK, we'll tell God that when he wrote it in the first pages of the Bible, the first the first elements of the creation story. Don't come at me with your Christian Bible thumping crap against astrology and how it's divination and how you're not supposed to worship this and worship that. Let me tell you, let me break it down. Let me make it really freaking simple for everybody, regardless of what you believe in. As long as you are honoring and worshiping the creator who created all of this, who created the good, the bad, the ugly, the everything in between, as long as you are honoring the highest the highest creator energy possible, then anything under its creation is still a part of the creator, just as you are. We all have creator energy in us. That's why I'm a creator, not a consumer. That's why I invite you to be a creator and not a consumer. Because when you are standing in the creator energy, you are in alignment with the Christos, the Christus, whatever you want to call it, okay? It is a, I'm going to say, perfect opportunity for you to understand that the creator at the top of the chart, the architect, if you will, created every little thing that we have ever been aware of, have ever experienced. And there's a reason why astrology is talked about in the Bible. And there is a reason why the Bible is literally just an allegoric handbook for deception, okay? And the solstice is something to celebrate. And that's why this capitalistic holiday has ruined us for generations because we've gotten away from honoring the creator's creation, which is earth, which is the stars, the planets, the sun, the moon above it. It is literally the, I'm going to say, guidelines that make everything here possible. And we really have to get back to the bare basics of what it is that we should be focused on and honoring. So it's a very difficult time. I get that. What are we experiencing in our physical bodies? Well, let me tell you, as if the head pressure, the heart space, you know, the intensity going on with all the feels isn't enough. Um, the little bumps in our mouth, these little, I don't even want to call them like, uh, you know, skin pimples or whatever. They're not even water blisters. They're just little kind of eruptions, if you will, 
on the inner cheeks, the inner linings of our mouth. Now that's a mucosa issue. We have a very thin layer of mucosa throughout our whole bodies, literally from our, from our, from hole to hole, let's say. Um, but what's happening here is we are going through a, the best way I can describe it is a oil change. Okay. If we were vehicles, which we are, we're just different. Uh, we're going through a lubrication oil change and we see the manifestation of that, uh, through the mucosa of our body. So you may notice that like maybe your eyes are dry. They're not as watery as they used to, or maybe they're over watering. Maybe the oils in your skin are over oily, or maybe you're dry as hell. Uh, maybe the little bumps in, in your mouth, the little canker sores, if you will, if you want to call them that, I don't really think they're that, but you can call them out if you want. That is a, um, a reaction to the oil change that we are getting. Um, you are feeling this probably burning feeling right under your rib cage. That is the acidity, the, the acid organs, if you will. Uh, again, we're lubricating. We're going through an oil change. So that's going to change as well. And you're likely feeling it in your guts, in the uh, hole-to-hole action, if you will. Um, so there is this fluctuation in the lubricants, in the mucosa, in our bodies and the bumps in the mouth and those other symptoms that I just rattled off, true indicator that you're going through the readjusting process of having, uh, your lubricants changed and topped up. Now we've been talking about the eyes for a while. Um, at first it was feeling like there was sand in our eyes or we couldn't get something out of our eyes because we were having a hard time seeing our realities for what they are and not for what it is that we wanted them to be. And then we moved into this stage where it kind of felt like there was crusties in our eyes. And then it kind of felt like one eye was lazier than the other. One eye was watering over the other. Then the eyes got itchy, was a sign of healing. Here's an interesting thing. First of all, visually speaking, don't know, drop me a line. Let me know if you've noticing it. Um, the shadows, the flashes, the orbs are a lot more frequent out of the corner of your eye. Seeing things, seeing the floaties in your eyes a lot more frequently. The itching is still there, but it almost feels like your eyelashes are itching. I don't know if if you know what I mean, but it's almost like the, the, the eyelash line is itchy. Like I'm not trying to rub my eyeball, not trying to get in the corners there. I literally like want to take my fingernail and scratch under the waterline of my eyelashes. And I think that that's interesting. I think that, uh, you know, as you know, eyelashes are a physical, uh, defense in order to keep dust and irritants out of our eyes. Um, you know, they're not just uh, a fashion statement out there, ladies, with your big caterpillars, just a fluttering on your eyes. Um, well, what they are is a defense mechanism. And what I think is happening right now is that we are, are starting to accept our truth, our reality. We are starting to see the light in a lot of ways. The fogginess is clearing, but we're a little bit on guard. And I feel like because we're on guard, that makes us defensive because we're having a hard time really taking the full picture in of what it is that we're seeing and trying to process. We're having this defense mechanism kind of kick up and energetically speaking, it's because, you know, energetically we're having a hard time making the adjustments in our eyes. As I talked about for the last couple of weeks, we are expanding the light spectrum that our physical eyes are able to pick up on. And that's why we're having these, you know, eye issues. But I think it has something to do with just being on guard. We're not really trusting anything in the world right now. You know, information, can we trust that? Probably not. Can we trust that what we're seeing? No, not likely with masks and clones and holographs and CGI and whatever. Like even when something is happening right in front of your face, we're skeptical now, we're questioning it. Did I really see that? Did that really happen? What could it have been? You know, we're trying to make up a lot of logic, a lot of practical excuses for a lot of the supernatural and mystic experiences that we're all currently having. And so I feel like it's coming down to the eyelashes to act as a defense. And because of that, we are experiencing itchiness. Now, if you get a sty in your eye, which is possible, if you're getting a sty in your eye, you're having a hard time accepting what it is that you're seeing. Um, literally, there's something obstructing your view on it. 
spiritually, energetically, and of course, manifests as a sty. Um, the, the shadow, I don't want to call them shadow people because they're not. A lot of people are misinformed about the shadow people. I guess I'll have to do a rant about that another time because I'm already pretty much an hour in here and I've only covered a couple of things. Um, but the shadow people are very misunderstood. Uh, a lot of the shadows that we see out of the corner of our eye are not negative forces or negative beings or shadow people in the way that you might have heard about them in stories and, and in the collective. And in fact, what it is, is a reflection of the, so I don't know how much you know about the physical body, but like our eyes bring in the light, bounces off the cones in the back of our eyes, gets processed uh, in a way that sends information to our brain. And when we see shadow elements or shadow people or whatever it is that you want to call it, orbs, whatever, um, our, our brain can't make sense of that. But what is actually happening is that the I'm going to say the density of light that spirit and energies show up in this very dense materialistic realm, they're becoming visible with our naked eye, but yet the light bouncing off of their density isn't something that is normal for our eyes and our brains to process in a concept that makes sense to us. And so we are seeing these things, they are really there, but it may appear as a shadow and of course trigger the misinformation that has been planted in your brain of what shadow, seeing shadows and seeing shadow people is all about. And then of course that invokes fear and then of course you're feeding the dark force agenda. So it's all connected and I'm just trying to prevent you from being fearful about it. So we got that going on. Um, the itchiness that we are experiencing in our skin, especially in our inner ears. Okay. That that's going to continue to be a thing. Um, our, you may notice that your memories aren't great. And I noticed it not too long ago, because I was trying to think of a name of a person that I was doing in depth research on just a couple of months ago and was like consumed with like literally couldn't sleep over until I had all the information that I needed. Um, I'm a little bit stalkerish like that. So, you know, whatever. Uh, it's a very intense thing when I get fixated on needing to know about something. I need to explore all avenues and I can be awake for days until I have the information that I need in order to make sense of it and process it. And I was obsessed with this particular individual and can't for the life of me remember their name. And it's driving me nuts. And I know that it's not important because, again, our memories get wiped um, and defragged on a regular in order to get rid of the information that is not important in order for us to retain new light codes. That's all part of the ascension process. Um, but especially because we're in a time warp right now. It's even more interesting to realize that, you know what, you may not be able to remember something from yesterday, let alone six months ago, let alone 10 years ago. And then all of a sudden, because we're in this nostalgic state of reprocessing, you'll get a flash of something that happened to you when you're like seven. You're like, how the hell can I remember that? But I can't remember this obsession that I had not even three months ago. You know what I mean? Like it's bizarre, but the memories are being again, collapsed in order to make space for the new one. The time warp is a thing. We're in accelerated manifestation state. We will kind of hit that brick wall and time will slow down. If you believe in time, I mean, everything is happening simultaneously. There's no past, future, present. It's all here in the now. It's just us humans. We're just so slow as individuals with the concept of this, that, you know, we're the ones that put labels on the concept of time. Um, but time is pretty, pretty effed up right now, I would say. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? I talked about the uh, acid, the relubing, if you will, uh, the ringing in the ears, the buzzers going off. It's almost like we are tapping into the, what I like to call uh, war room. So you have guides in the astral realm. This is how you communicate with higher realms of intelligence. And they are sitting in a, let's call it a war room with computer screens, with visuals, with sounds, with alarms, like that is your team. You know, people think that, oh, spirit guides, it must be angels. Angels are just a different form of demons. So don't get caught up in that, you know, hoopla either. Um, but literally, I want you to think of going to work. Okay. And you have a team 
on mic, on, on doing all this data, you know, think of, think of NASA, even though NASA is a scam, think of, you know, the people out in space, they're mic'd up, they're on a mission, they're doing things, they don't necessarily have communication back to the, you know, operating department, but there's a lot of people there, there's a lot of cameras, there's a lot going on. Well, that's how our spirit guides work with us. And the ringing and the buzzing and the alarms and the sirens going off is an audio, an audio experience that we're able to pick up on when we are in alignment with our guides. And I've been hearing, you know, a lot of people hear music and blah, 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 blah. I've been hearing the dashboard of alarms go off, which tells me that we are at a very interesting point of the ascension of the collective awakening, because I can hear the background noise that I shouldn't be able to hear coming from the operating room, if you will. I, I all often call God, G-O-D, Galactic Operating Department, because that's where our guides are, right? But anyways, um, I can hear all that. And I'm sure if you, now that you know about it, you'll be able to pick up on it too when you are highly connected to your guides. Um, the Ascension cold, Ascension flu. Now everybody out there seems to be sick, especially little kids. I want to talk about little kids here for a second. Checking my time. Okay, I don't have much time. Pay attention to the little kids of the world right now because like they've already been born into this earth plane without their karmic grids being intact, right? They're they're not here to repeat karma. They're they're new here. They've also been born retaining a lot more information from their Akashic records than many of us, which means that they have a complete understanding of their mission here. Please do not dismiss when they have imaginary friends. Please do not dismiss when they have dreams that they tell you about. Please do not dismiss when they start talking about previous lives or, you know, certain things that they know are going to happen. Um, the kids right now are the most in tune and aligned with the galactic grid of what it is that we are about to experience. Please do not dismiss your younger children. Now, for teenagers, teenagers are all hella hooked up right now because they got the hormones of their physical bodies just working against them and they have fragments of their inner selves, their higher selves glitching out because the world is trying so hard to condition them and conform them. But there's this light that keeps blinking in their inner realms to keep them connected to the higher realms. And a lot of them don't have the information or the guidance that they need in order to understand what's going on with them. So it can manifest as, you know, depression and, and, and wanting to end life. Let me remind you, I went on a separate rant about this a couple of weeks ago, like, um, suicide, right. To want to kill yourself isn't supposed to be a physical act. It's supposed to be an indicator that you're about to level up energetically into a new soul contract, essentially seeing the old death of self and the rebirth of new versions of self. However, when these children, these teenagers, are planted in a family where the parents are unawakened and have no clue and haven't done the work and the support within themselves in order to be knowledgeable, in order to act as a guide and an assistant to their, you know, their offspring going through this huge dramatic shift of being planted on this earth in order to hold the grid down. When, when your parents don't understand that, you go to your parents and they just dismiss you as a hormonal teenager who's, you know, going through an ego crisis, that can be very diminishing, very dis heartening and put a lot of these teenagers in situations to actually take their own physical lives, which is what not what they're here to do. And so, you know, it is your job as a parent to awaken yourself, even if it's not for you to do the work so that you are informed enough to help your children and the children are needed right now. That's why there's an attack on our children out there in the collective. That's why the children are the target because they literally are the keys to new earth, to, to the future. And the dark agenda knows that. So you need to do everything that you can to inform yourself, if not for yourself, for your children in order to assist them in the energy work that they are already born here, equipped to do. It's you that's slow and behind the times, not them. So please pay attention to your children. I want to talk about very briefly uh, about the finger pain, the hand cramps, the wrist pain, the arm pain. Okay. 
Again, may I remind you, we have chakra points in the palms of our hands. That's why you're supposed to raise your hands in prayer. Raise your hands to the sun. Raise your hands to the sky. That's how we receive light codes. We also have them in our feet, our soul chakras, if you will. But those ones are connected to the earth, conducting the energy back and forth between us as a vessel and, of course, the earth plane giving and receiving those frequencies and vibrations back to us. The palm chakras are still having a hard time being activated, being uh, opened. If you think that there wasn't a reason why spikes were driven through Jesus Christ's hand on that cross, you got another thing coming. It was to break the chakra the palm chakras. And that's why our DNA, our palm chakras um, have been kind of disarmed or disengaged because of the act that was done to Jesus. And again, Jesus was not a man with real physical spikes through drove drove through his hands, but that is a topic and a, and a theme for a different episode. But what I'm trying to get at is a lot of people having wrist pain, finger cramps, hand cramps, whatever the case may be, please understand you got to shake that out. You got to clap your hands. You got to put crystals in your hands. You have to run your hands under hot water, cold water, salt, whatever feels good to you, whatever it is that you're being called to do, because you have to put in the effort in order to try and kind of dig out the gunk that has been purposely put in your palm chakras. That's where the magic is. That's how we send energy. That's how we receive energy. And a lot of people are going through a lot of pain, a lot of dysfunction right now uh, because of their palm chakras. Last thing I want to talk about, I guess, uh, well, it's not the last thing, but my time is telling me that I got to shut, shut up here very quickly. Uh, okay. I'll just, I'll turn up, I'll turn up the speed on Marley talk and try to fit all this in so that I can, you know, not feel like I left anything unsaid. So of course we still have sinus issues. Sinus issues are the involvement of the third eye. We just had a huge activation within our shifts of our divine scripts of our soul contracts. Yes, we're having a hard time with our physical eyes opening up to the newest version of the light spectrum. We are having a hard time perceiving the information that is in front of us. But because of that, our third eye is now going through a renovation as well. When we go through a lubrication, a relubrication, if you will, the oil change that we're currently going through, we also have to have a realignment. It's almost like our third eye gets a little bit popped open, of course, creating sinus pressure, sinus issues. Everybody out there sick right now, everybody thinks that they got the cold and the flu. They might biologically have some kind of virus, have some kind of repercussions of a chemical shit storm going on in their body, likely connected to the bioweapon or their diets, a matter of fact. But realistically, what we're being faced with is the ascension cold, is the ascension flu. We have a lot of solar flares, there's a lot of CMEs. We have a rapid cycle happening right now, trying to clear us out and purge us of the old codes of the old energies in order for us to have a clean slate, a clean operating system in order to receive the new ones. Because of that, there is a lot going on in the lymph node system. I talked about this before. If you have a swollen throat, if you have pain in your underarms, if you have groin pain, that is your lymph node system trying to remove the poisons, the toxins out of your body. People are having gallbladder issues. People are having liver issues. Why? Because we are not we are not using our filtration system the best way possible. We have to do a detox. We have to do a cleaning. There is a lot of gunk in our physical body systems that cannot be removed on its own. And therefore the energy codes get blocked up. We get ascension symptoms because of that blockage. That is a messenger from our bodies to our attention in order to say, Hey, need a little bit of help here. You got to do something about this. Please look into a liver detox. Please look into tinctures. Now we are in a state of holiday craziness, holiday chaos, where food is literally being shoved down our throats. Where alcohol is being presented every left, right, and center. If you are ingesting alcohol, if you are putting sugars in your body, then you are doing a very, very huge disservice to your physical body. Resist the temptation. There's a reason why people get sick around these holidays. It is not because of flu. It is not because of viruses. It's not because of energy. It's because of the amount of sugar and alcohol that y'all are putting in your bodies. Please refrain from doing that. Because of that, there's a lot of liver issues, a lot of people struggling with the detox center system in your body. We just had an oil change. As you know, you can not have a successful oil change without replacing the oil filter. The liver, the lymph node system, the kidneys are all filters for our detox system. Please do the work in order to replace all of your filters, especially going into a new year. It would be advisable to clean the slate as much as possible and give your body a fighting chance. The last thing that I think I'm going to address, actually, no, that's a lie. A uh, couple of things. 
your hair hurting. Okay. There is such a thing as your hair hurting. It could be the hair on your head. It could be a hair in other places of your body. We're not going to get that up close and personal about it. Let me just say that hair hurting is a thing. Why? Because your hair is an antenna. Your hair is a receiver for the information from the electromagnetic frequencies put out there in the air. There is a reason why when you go through a painful thing, a painful chapter, a painful life lesson, the first thing that you want to do is cut your hair. It's not an identity thing. It is literally cutting off the dead end ends of that particular life lesson of that particular topic and scenario, that chapter, that theme in your body, your hair is hurting because there is so much information coming in because we are approaching the galactic center that we are having a hard time receiving all this information because again, our physical body systems are not operating at its optimal frequency, which means that we are essentially blocking our own information. Our hair hurting is a good infer is a good indicator that our antennas aren't as aligned with the, uh, let's call it intergalactic an antenna as it needs to be. What can we do about it? Well, if it's happening on your head, that is a crown issue. You are going to have to massage the head. You are going to have to open up your mind. You are going to have to wash your hair. You are going to have to put a hat on. You are going to have to do some tapping. If it's in other areas of the body, please examine where it is that the energy meridians are showing up in that area of your body in order to understand why it is that you're having pain and discomfort in that particular area of your body. If the hair is hurting, it means that there is a disconnect in the antenna of your physical body to the intergalactic antenna of the cosmos trying to give you a strong connection in order for you to download the data packets that you need to download in order to have the light codes in order to actually move into the new year with a clean operating state. The burning sensations that you are feeling either in your head, in your throat, in your eyes, in your stomach, in other orifices of your body is because we are going through a lubrication change. We are getting a oil change. This sensation, this burning is a good indicator. Take a good look at your diet. Take a good look at the fluids. Take a good look at what it is that you're putting in, what it is that you're consuming. Not only food, not only drink, but information as well. There's a burning sensation because the burning sensation is trying to cleanse our inner palate, so to speak, to burn away all the gunk in order to prepare us to move into a brand new year where we're in a brand new chapter, where we have brand new lessons, brand new light codes coming in. We have to clear the gunk. The only way to actually regenerate a surface, think of a volcano, the lava spews, it burns everything around it. But after the fact, that beautiful, beautiful plush Okay, plush greenery that comes oh of where that land was scorched is just so freaking beautiful. So that inner burning, if you will, on the inside of our bodies is essentially trying to burn away the gunk to give us a clean slate, a clean palate in order for regeneration to actually be initiated as we move into a new year. So guys, I'm serious now. I am done talking. I have covered everything. I have little checks off of everything that I wanted to talk about. I feel satisfied. I feel content with it. I am going to wrap this up. I am going to leave this here. I want to thank you so freaking much for sitting with me, for sharing your time, for sharing your attention and energy and presence here with me each and every single time we do this date night, Friday night, live in the chat. Appreciate you so much. If you missed the live chat, I would really encourage you to join into the community and at least sit in on one of them and just feel the energy and vibration and frequency shift for you. It is a beautiful experience. I look forward to Friday night, date night, each and every single week, uh, because we always leave on a higher vibration than we came in on. But of course, I appreciate you tuning in at any point in time for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for all of the good things of interacting with this post and making the information a lot more available to those that need to hear it. I want to thank you for showing up for me, but mostly I want to thank you for showing up for yourself. I hope you have a beautiful week. I'm sending you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon.